sounds a fantastic man. He <laughs> really is. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. What's going on, everybody? This is Dan French. This is a French Workbench podcast here on a Saturday, and I got a full cast here. Familiar faces. Uh, this channel is the most real behind the scenes uh, regarding financing, real estate, money talk, entrepreneurs through on job experience here in Las Vegas. We want to thank everybody in for, uh, out there for tuning in. We got a full show today. Um, you know, many, we're going to talk a lot about what's happening with investors. Many buyers are uh, having homes snatched up by investors. And if you look at the second quarter, investors snatched up a large amount of homes for renters and uh you know so you're still in the market you know if you're a buyer out there looking to potentially buy a home your opportunities are still there because you can they, a lot of people are still willing to come in over list but with this all these buyers are all these uh, investors buying these investment properties it's something to look at and uh, we were going to talk about that today go ahead brett with that being said not just <laughs> some buyers, I mean, some investors have stepped in. How many in this past quarter? Right, right. So we're going to talk. Like 2,000. Right. We're going to talk about that today. <laughs> we're going to talk about that today. Also, we're going to talk about the eviction moratorium of what's happening. Um, <clears throat> you know, what's going on with that. Also, we're going to talk about what's happening in Las Vegas. And is now the right time to buy? Or are we back in a normal market? Because a lot of the, the numbers we're seeing out there is that Las Vegas is starting to open up i disagree we're going to talk to matt about the uh really about an update that's going on in the in the housing market so matt what's going on buddy how are you good morning i am well thank you very good nice to see you man good to see you too yeah lovely, he, lovely to be here yes i'm glad to have you man you showed up with your cowboy hat on with yeah, your glasses exactly. you were you just know, ready just, you know what i love about you matt you always show up with your british accent no, no, the thing is i do i'm from england originally but i'm trying to be more a little bit more american each time and yeah. then i well, put on that I, damn cowboy hat the standard I, I son in, put on that i was put on that cowboy hat and play some baseball i was in the tractor supply store and i was getting some rabbit food for my bunnies uh -huh. and then i saw this hat and i had to get it it was 25 dollars. oh look at you look at yeah. did you have that hat so you can is that is that something you wore to that uh the hoedown no i didn't, <laughs> didn't do it you look like <laughs> clint eastwood's grandson yeah, right get here get this sir. guy some apple pie in a baseball game you know what? i'm all about the apple pie <laughs> <laughs> So what what happened to you yesterday, man? You were out, you were you were you were getting a smoothie or something, right? You said, and what uh, was going on? Well, what happened was, I take these off. <laughs> it's not, I'm not Tom Cruise, <laughs> right? Um, so what happened was, I uh, had a good week, took a couple of listings, and then sure. didn't have my children. And a client um, said, "Do you want to go to the topless beach at Mandalay Bay?" Oh Australia. wow! Yeah, the European beach, you know, the bathing. Yeah, pool. who said and, that? A client, and then so in and Vegas. Whose children? In, no, no you said children. something about children. I <laughs> no, I, no, no. So anyway, so what happened was we had this free bed, and normally you have to pay like five hundred or a thousand bucks for it, and we just gave him like fifty dollars because he's his friend. Yeah. And I'm I've got to say I've never witnessed such a debaucherous spectacle in my entire life. It was almost unsavory. Why? What, 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 <laughs> really? Unsavory. Unsavory. You, that's not very American. Americans don't talk that proper. All right. <laughs> Savage. Savage. That's American. And the other thing, the other thing as well, is that I don't drink anymore, and so I remember everything. <laughs> I remember everything in vivid, vivid detail. <laughs> So that was interesting. That was interesting. Is that the that first time you ever went or <laughs> yeah, was part of yeah, Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not really my scene, you know? Yeah. But it's, you got to experience it. Yeah, day. man. You it's know, not really your scene. I do. Oh, <laughs> sounds, sounds like it. I, I, I observe the dirty work, so you don't have to. <laughs> oh. yeah. well, well, thanks <laughs> thanks for... Direct message me with any questions you may have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're going to get a, a lot of those questions. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm just going to leave that one alone. <laughs> things that popped up in my head. But. Right. So we also got Brett Jenny. Brett, what's going on, man? What's going on in your world, buddy? Oh, man. Just... <laughs> like that, huh? It's just you like know, a little bit of everything, man. I had it was it was a crazy July. I had just yeah, gone back home and blah blah blah, and um, just trying to get back in the swing of things. And 
the market keeps on going off like crazy. So, yeah, you know, fighting for my buyers and then you get those accepted and make sure everything goes smooth and yeah, keep on top of everything trying to come in and, you know, good, good times. Good times. huh? Yeah, that's what I do. And we got uh, Mr. <laughs> Joe Dragon. What's up, buddy? How are you? You were here on Tuesday. Thanks for coming in again, man. You know, you're somebody that's always reliable. Oh. I love that. <laughs> Call me an old steed, you know. Yeah, that's Super right, Super reliable. What, what's going on with you, buddy? Oh, you know, ups, downs, <laughs> in-betweens. Got, still got a two-month-old, two so. Two-month-old. Yeah. Yeah. You're dealing with what? that, huh? Requirements, right? Yeah. yeah. Work is like you know? a secondary thought right now. With, it's like all mixed. Yeah. Right? Yeah, Jumble. Yeah. I don't know when's day, when's night. Right? I'm no, just, that's the thing about being Everybody's crying. I know. <laughs> well, that's the thing about being an adult. It's not about what right. month it is. It's what do I have to I get know. done? Yeah. Right? Exactly. Right. I wonder what happened. It's a work. <laughs> yeah. like, work. Wake up one day. Our children. You have three? It, no, I have. I've gone through. You've that. had three. Yeah. It's, yes, a lot, it's a lot of work, you know? What do you mean? You've had three? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't have them anymore? Uh, no, he has no, two. I have two now, but I have But three. one passed away. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm sorry. Just had to keep on pressing, it's didn't a, you? It's I'm a, just kidding. It's a lot of work. It's yeah. a lot of work. You know? Yeah, yeah it is it, a lot of work. It's a ton of work. work. It's a lot of work. So, guys, we got a lot of information going on in Las Vegas. I want to talk about uh, a couple things. One is mask mandatory was happening now in mm -hmm. yesterday. As we sit inside. Yeah. As we sit inside, right? Yeah. And the thing is... is Again, I'm, Hey, you know what's weird is you, you walk in and people are like, hey, you need a yeah. mask. And wow. I think a lot of people are starting to object because I feel that, you know, they were wearing them and now they don't have to wear yeah. them. What's going to happen with that? Well, I was at, like, so I was in a casino yesterday. And so I heard, I've heard a couple of things. They're going to, the, there's a lot of pushback against the, the masks again. And like in the casinos, you have to wear them again. But it's not as strict as it was before yet. But I think there's going to be a transitional period. Yeah. And, you know, this morning I didn't have a mask when I went to Starbucks and they said, the way they asked me, we, we, would you like a mask? Yeah. Because they're like more like tacit acceptance of it happening rather than forcing it. Sure. But I think yeah. that's going to change. Um, what, to force or to... Uh, probably, it's going to get, over the next week, it's probably going to switch around. Well, like the only city that is doing this. Well, yeah. actually, New Orleans, I think, just did but it the again thing is, yesterday. Here's thing. I heard a rumor. Or state. I heard a rumor, and it wouldn't surprise me, right, that this is the precursor. <clears throat> I heard a rumor that it's all but pretty much a done deal, that they, there may be another lockdown in, like, the second or third week of August. Yeah. Because this is the precursor of to what? It, of, of having another, like, shutdown. Well, do you mm. think it's going to get to that level? That was my question I'm, is, do you think Las Vegas will shut down again? Not in the sense gonna of... It's going to be a bloodbath if it does. Yeah, like, I don't think it's going to completely, right? I don't know. I don't okay. know. But, like, it's all it's all tied into, like, pushing more vaccines and making you get the vaccines to go um, back to work and have everything open. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They're, they're, they're pushing to actually incentive, uh, give incentive to... Well, they have people, are. yeah, a hundred dollars. They're talking about to what, get a vaccine. Hasn't passed it yet. Yeah, to go get a vaccine. So they're saying if you go get a vaccine, you're going to get a hundred dollars. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. that it hasn't it hasn't passed yet. What do you think would happen if they did a federal mandate? You got to get it. I, I don't think it's illegal. See, it's not. It's not. It's not. They <laughs> had that exact case from the Supreme Court in 1905 mm. of all. I didn't even know they had vaccines. Yeah, yeah, they did. Apparently, they time. did. And there was a case in, uh, I think it was Massachusetts, some guy didn't want to get a mandated vaccine or some pandemic, goes all the way to the mm -hmm. Supreme Court and says no. Huh. Because the burden of you getting one so less compared to the... But I uh, read something about when they were going through the rules of when they did the Nuremberg trials for World War II, that uh, one of the like rules well, out there uh, is that you can't mandatory... You know, so, make somebody take a vaccine or something that so, they don't want. Like it's it, no, it goes against like crimes against also, humanity. There's something else, right? Yeah, but that's that's that, national. That, yeah, that supersedes that's, that's, the United also, States. You can't. You, you no, can. not really. Unless you have a treaty. The world with some, doesn't. No. Well, the thing is with the vaccine, nothing really. Is, I mean, it's all a bunch of. You yeah. can die. Or no, get, you're right. I mean, you're yeah. the attorney. You, you can, tell me. You, <laughs> you can die or get injured from all vaccines. It's possible. So you can't force someone to take something when it's possible that you could die or get injured. And that's that's known as a, like federally known as a. I agree outcome. with you, but I no, but you I, I disagree. I think one. the government can do anything they want to do if they no. want to. I'm just and saying the legal no, the no, legal no, precedent. I'm not saying yeah, it's right yeah, or wrong, yeah, which is what you cite to when you're yeah, arguing yeah. this kind of stuff. Yeah. Says you can't. Yeah. Now that could always argue to be overturned. So yeah, I th but I don't think it's going to go there because I think um, I, I mean there's what you can. 
do yeah. on paper and what you can do in reality, really and, know, and people would just freak out if you actually tried to do that. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, the, the, the new mask date is the mandate, yeah. is the thin end of another wedge that's coming. Like, but that's the thin end of the wedge, and the other part of the wedge could be other, like, things that are going to yeah. come, you know? So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Yeah, and yeah. Then, you people know, are tired. Zion, yeah. uh, you know that park, mm -hmm. yeah. the National Park? They, they had people that were driving the shuttles. I just was reading this yeah. that... They they were getting so many complaints and people were arguing with them about wearing masks. Oh, Utah's different. Utah's well, they, they yeah, quit. Utah's very. I've got Utah's a story about very that. Very different. I've yeah. got a story about that. Utah's yeah. very different. They are very more like uh, mostly like God driven, yeah, like natural. Sure. And they don't <clears throat> they don't uh, adhere to you know the well media. Arizona. They've got their own like community. So last uh, I think it was January. Mm -hmm. I think we we're still everything was still up, right? Max <clears throat> Manity, all that stuff. Driving to Salt Lake to do a uh, to go skiing for the weekend, and it, it, that 15 cuts through the northern and western corner of Arizona. Mm -hmm. Stop to get gas, and I'm in this gas station. Everybody's got masks on and whatnot, and this like older lady, like 60, a little heavy set. Mm -hmm. it, I noticed doesn't have a mask on, which what then was like, oh, right, mm -hmm. you know, she's and then the devil. <laughs> she starts talking to me because I'm like, I'm going to Salt Lake. She's like, oh, you can't make it. The roads closed. You can go ski at this county somewhere mm -hmm. else or whatever. But this county has a mask mandate in Utah. This one doesn't. She knew all the counties. Wow. With Literally all by the, the counties. Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Just sitting, like, yeah. researching all these counties. People get religious people about upset. this stuff. Yeah. More on, like, a kind of uh, I, I I'm uh, just trying to pay my bills and get ahead yeah. in life. So, yeah. I mean, if people have time to dedicate... Yeah. I'm just, I just, hey, you want me to put my mask on? No problem. I'm just trying to go about my business. And yeah, I think some people take it personal, <laughs> or they don't. I, you know, they just don't want to be told what to do. No, yeah. I listen. Believe me, dude. Forth, I'm you know? the well, biggest person thing. in the world that hates here's that, so I get it. But here's still, the thing. what happened last time? If there was okay, so I thought, well, what if there is that we have this mask mandate, and what if it is the thin end of the wedge, <clears> and, <throat> and there's going to be a bit more coming down the line attached to the Delta variant? Which, which is like you, the Delta variant, it's new, it's different, and then you need another booster or vaccine for this Correct. particular variant. Yeah. So that's what the, their trajectory is going to be. But in terms of the real estate housing market, I think that it's probably going to make ha prices go up. Why? Because it's going to jam the system up again, and there's going to be even less supply. Well, it got jammed up because people backed off originally because they're all panicked with this. Uh, right, the but what I'm on. saying is that I, I just think that it's probably going to jam, it's going to, Jam the system. It's going to slow, like unless the they don't of transactions. But if they don't, well, off. I guess a better right. way that we're looking at it well, would be what ready. would be different this time. Maybe we're used than to it. was we're ready and it different because, from the first time. because the first time it was this whole new. thing was new. new. Yeah. It was a new mm -hmm. big concept. Herod's not. It's like not you new. have. We've already got different systems, and I guess, and procedures. So, but I yeah. just I w I thought about it. Like, so what if there's another lockdown? What if we? What if there is one for a little bit, right? How would that affect the real estate market? I think it would make a bit harder to do deals. To buy bit. or sell, both, a little bit. It's going to be. I don't but think it's it all would contingent because be. remember, it's all contingent on getting on another <laughs> or a stimulus bill again. Yeah, and I the know. stimulus bill is all contingent on. Um, That's a good point. Um, how uh, you keep doing this, and I guarantee you, we're going to go off a inflationary cliff. Now, I think the Fed will stop it beforehand, yeah. and when they do, guess what? There's not going to be more lockdowns. Yeah. That was only possible because um, inflation stimulus. was so low at the time, mm -hmm. and they could pump that stimulus in to keep the economy going. Yeah, and we've yeah. seen we've seen inflation yeah. increasing. I hear it all the yeah. time. People are saying that inflation's a problem, or you know, gas is going higher, cost of goods is going higher. So we're seeing that really come to fruition. Now, mm -hmm. talking about in the vaccine and things like that, we're not going to go in too much depth, but. A lot of these employers are saying or are, are hoping that you get the vaccine or, or mandating that you get the vaccine. And they're talking about a lot of uh, people in office and things like that need to get the vaccine if they want to report to work. What do you think about that? Do you think that's going to be a problem or you think people are going to just conform to that? I don't uh, think they're not going to conform. I don't think that. I think it's like it. I mean, there's it could be like discriminatory or legal there's a whole bunch of stuff yeah but like at the end of the day everyone's gonna <clears throat> do what they're gonna do i think and, most and people right people, now are fighting the work remote yeah and there's there's yeah. a whole workforce of like 40 percent that say we don't want to go back period that's a good and point. i think that things have been about, adjusted to that that i think there would be an option if a company's smart because if you're gonna start firing people like that so so here's another you guys thought. will be lined up Here's another thought I had. Well, I mean, there's, there's money to be made, dude. I don't blame. I mean, yeah. because pe those are rights you could say being taken away. Right. What rights? 
being being fired for not getting the vax for not being vaccinated. I'm not saying right or wrong, but that's a case one could make. I'm assuming in court. Yeah, that, that's a better because argument. I, because that's, that's a better ahead. argument than a mandate, right? Because yeah. um, workers' rights—you have a right to your privacy, your right yes, to your personal absolutely. life over um, work. That said, I mean, you can get Sorry. fired for saying something on social yeah, media. I, I, I mean, well, it's, it's a kind of a gray area as far it's as something um, that could be argued. I mean, it definitely be argued, and definitely not want to deal with a loss. That's probably why they're not. Yeah, that's um, what that's what I'm that's saying why is not, that's why um, like people that I keep on seeing on Twitter are like, don't don't quit. Let right. them fire you. And it depends which state you're in. Nevada's Let them fire you. Right to work, right to fire. So really, yeah, the, only, Nevada's, the only... The Nevada's only... Like, I, you looked at me wrong. You're fired. Legit. Yeah, they can do that. The only thing you can't do is obviously say, like, be racist. Like, yeah. you know, like, oh, you're black, you you're fired. Break, or yeah, you're white, yeah, you're yeah, fired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, good luck with that. You but can't break civil that, rights. Right. Yeah. That's it. Matt, and what so, were you going to say, Matt, on that uh, topic? Oh, I was going to say that... Like I thought, I, ha- I thought this thought through the one about like what if there is another lockdown or quarantine, and then, um, oh, what was I going to say? You were just oh, my other thought was okay. The rental foreclosure, rental moratorium's over, right? Yeah, we're so going to talk gonna, about no, that. No, but that's yeah. going to cause some discombobulation with people. Ooh, They're going to get word. kicked out. That is, know? isn't it? Like right? plethora. <laughs> and then, sounds smart. And then, I try to use that a lot. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Yeah. Makes me sound so, smart. No, but the thing is. <laughs> Sorry. Then the thing is, always we're going to have all this ripple yeah. effect across the country. And then if we have another lockdown, then the government can be seen to step in and say, oh, we're stopping this because we're, there's another lockdown. Right. So they don't have to do another stay on the eviction moratorium. Instead, they could start something new and kick the can again. And then Biden looks good. Gotcha. You know? That, Sorry, that, I was talking about plethora. Oh, no, 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 that. it's all right. But, but, that, but that, <laughs> that, that was right. just a thought. That's a good word, man. That, that's just a thought because that would, that, that would make Harvard sense. Harvard word. You know? Yeah, that so, would make sense. So let's talk, about, I'm let's just talk about the eviction moratorium, okay? So yeah, yeah. we obviously see that it's not been extended for renters. This is for mm-hmm. renters out there that are looking to maybe have that push down, the can kick down the road, as you say, yeah. where they don't have to pay their rents. Mm-hmm. Now, the eviction moratorium has not been extended. Now, the uh, foreclosure moratorium, FHA has extended it to September 31st. So they extended it. What does banks want to do? They don't want to foreclose. They don't even want to start the process to foreclose. Why? Because they don't want to take Who's all- foreclosing? They don't need to. Well, they don't need so to. Much equity. Exactly. We're talking about eviction of um, yeah. Well, we're, yeah, we're, we're talking about both. So the eviction, the renters are not going to oh, be yeah. evicted. Starting, uh, are they're going to be evicted if they're not paying their rents or they're not caught up on their rents after today? Today's the last day. So if you think that you're going to have that, like I said, that kick down the road, the can yeah. kick down the road, that's going to be a problem. Now, for homeowners that have loans and have mortgages, FHA's come out and said they're going to support and help you. Yes. Now, also, <clears throat> I think that's going to follow suit with uh, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, anybody that's that's got a loan because banks don't really want to foreclose. What do you think is going to happen with the eviction moratorium? Is it really going to open up? opportunity here in vegas because i think a lot of people go ahead brett <laughs> go ahead you're raising your hand may i ask a question teacher go ahead so i think we kind of already answered that when we opened up this the show which is there's t- over two thousand investors that were oh, yeah. in this last quarter no no, the, no 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 investors bought over three thousand sorry they bought over three thousand right, homes right, right right in this last sorry in this last quarter so if so more that, available, if more available inventory comes on the market, they're gonna. Sn- well, let's talk about the eviction I mean, part of it, though. So, you, I'm sure we have a lot of people that there's ten times as buyers for yeah, every. Right? Is it going to open up more opportunities? I guess. And what what do you think is going to be the outcome here in Las Vegas with all these people now not having the ability to keep extending yeah. and not paying rent? Like, Landlords what do you, what are your get thoughts? Per- out quick because there's a there's a, I've encountered like, going to listings that have tenants. The tenants cause a lot of problems, and that like the landlords have been hurt with like not receiving mortgage payment if they're leveraged. Like yeah. a lot of them are just want to peace out right now and take, mm-hmm. take their money. So I, I, would, I feel I, real bad for yeah. uh, for for owners of properties it that is, are renting. I mean, it's, it's terrible. I mean, right? well, it, it is a risk they took. It is a ri- it was part of the deal. But like when you become a landlord, there's always risk. But at the same time, that was extraordinary event. But a force by be, nature. Is no, like forced by government. Yeah, well, that's what. <laughs> well, I know, that's but what, that's essentially yeah, maybe the category. Dan, of it, Dan I you missed know? it. You said, um, so what? Biden did that recently? So no, 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 no. So Biden tried to extend it, and okay. they went through legislation, and they didn't pass it. Right? Okay, they said okay. it's I, not going to happen. I missed that. Right on the eviction for renters part. Yeah. I got a lot to say so about this. I so I think I think 
I hope we may have a bit more choice for like FHA buyers. Right. And like price points under like 350. I would hope a bit more would come on, but we'll see what happens. Well, this, okay. I've got a, um, I got a client that I got, uh, I started representing, I think, in December of last mm. year. She bought a house, not through um, escrow, kind of a quick claim de deal, kind of got, um, kind of screwed over, represented her on that, on the transaction. And she's had a tenant in there, I think she got one in like December of 19th. Okay. And hasn't paid rent since. Wow. Whoa. Now, the, the tenant hasn't paid any rent? Or just not since? Maybe one. One, but hasn't yeah. paid anything oh. since. So, um, meanwhile, I think she paid 225 for the house. The house is praising like 380 yeah. right now, something like that. <laughs> so, I'm like, look, you know, because we can beat this case down, mm -hmm. right? You can get titled. You're going to be out some money with the rent, but I could just probably. So, she doesn't have a clear title right now? No, that's what I'm doing oh, for yeah, her. yeah, yeah. And she's like, look, I don't want to, I don't want to beat this case down. All I want to do is get clear title as soon as possible. And I don't want to rent and I'm done with investing in rent. Cause that's the effect it had on yeah, people that were trying. Yeah. She got bashed. Yeah. Right. So now that you're saying, well, how is this going to affect the housing did price? She paid cash for the house. She did pay cash. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I think you would she, have she to. She couldn't get a loan. You can't get a loan on something that yeah, yeah. doesn't have clear title. It's a, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a whole, like, yeah, yeah. It's I know, whole I know what's going on. Chain of she, um, she should be good title, but you know, when that happens, you got all parties fighting. Cost you a lot of attorney fees. That's why you go through escrow and get title insurance. But anyhow, <laughs> um, but anyhow, my point was we were talking about the spike in housing consumption, mm. right? In the last three months, we've been talking about it on this show. And we said mainly because people come from California, mm -hmm. mainly because the economy started to take off again. You're adding the second layer here where investments, investors are going to get perked up again because they're not dealing with this issue. I think it's going to come, com demand's just going to keep compounding yeah, on yeah, itself. 100%. So, so one I other agree. thing, yeah. Blackstone, there's this entity called Invitation Homes who I used to work for. Yeah. And I like keep an eye on what they're up to. And uh, they just announced that, so these investors, there's so, um, yeah, there's so little home assets for them to purchase to yield that what they're thinking now is, the, they originally they bought over like 120,000 single family rentals, right. rent them out and yeah. collateralize them. Um, now they're like, well, we can't get enough rentals, so we're gonna partner with the builder and build whole subdivisions. Yeah, we're of rental out. homes, yeah. single family yeah. rental homes. Who said this? Uh, it's Invitation Homes. It's a joint entity with Blackstone, the hedge okay. fund. So then, what's gonna happen then is that in prime metropolitan areas like Las Vegas. Phoenix or up and coming metropolitan areas. Right. The the hedge funds are going to compete with the builders to buy land and they're just going to knock out rentals. And so Wall Street is betting all in that the future in America is Americans renting. Like they're going all in on it. And that and what's happening is they're getting the the bottom two or three rungs of the ladder the best product is going to be like hedge fund rentals. Yeah. And then people are going to gravitate that the, the, the hedge funds are betting that people are going to gravitate towards them and they're going to get a jolly good yield out of it. And that's going to make it harder for first time home buyers and for people to move around. So the hedge funds have the money to come in and say, we're just going to create our own market for it then. And they yeah. can't find it. The other and they thing, can, dude. The other I, thing I was thinking millions and millions dude, of assets. Dude, in 2013, what? Kevin and I sold what? Three or four hundred, yeah, to to, hedge to, funds. to, to to hedge funds, dude. Yeah. Three like four hundred short sales in one year to wow. hedge fund. Yeah, yeah and dude, is, Las Vegas was one of like ten cities. But the other thing with Vegas, <laughs> yeah, what are you Matt? Yeah, Vegas yeah. is different because all the all the tech companies, the real estate tech companies, and the hedge funds. Vegas is a great market to test products <clears throat> or like strategies, sure, because it's a small enclosed micro microcosm. And you can see everything, and it's like one block of island of activity. Mm -hmm. So companies can focus on it and test things and see what happens. But like in in our market, because there's so much, uh, so many hedge funds here, and so much interest, like from Zillow that flips about a thousand homes a year here, and like so because we have this attention, there's not going to be another crash because if anything starts to change in the market, these hedge funds will take advantage well, of it right away. Unless yeah. yeah. Unless your Bitcoin bubble causes a exactly. crash. Or, yeah, <laughs> how's how's exactly. a Bitcoin bubble going to cause a crash? I, 
Five percent of the world is included in Bitcoin. Five percent of the world. That's not going to crash anything. I'm just, well, that's, that's a good point. That's a good point. So not yet. As anyways. long as it doesn't go to ten, which is 20, my point, 30, why you should get 40. into it. Because if it's this price now and only five percent of the world is, think about when thirty percent of the world's in. And it. that is a good point. Oh. You want to ride the bubble, but I don't. I don't buy the stuff with the. Anyhow, I, I buy and hold, trade. dude. I don't trade. I'm the worst trader in the world. Well, let's go no. back. I let's, found out. Let's talk about what Matt was <laughs> buy saying. And hold. Let's talk about what Matt was saying. So Matt Sorry. was saying that that we had a lot of investors, right? That are willing to come in and buy that those homes. And we saw this thing. Maybe they learned something from when the crash back oh, in the no, mid-2000s. They didn't learn something. They invented the whole thing. Right? Yeah. right. That's when they started it. Invented what? The hedge fund? No, they invented the... Arc they didn't invent... They started setting up the architecture mm -hmm. to swoop up homes for a high yield where mm -hmm. they can borrow money for like 1%. So here's, here's the thing. Hed hedge so it, all the architecture's there. All these hedge funds are managing like hundreds of thousands of homes. And, mm -hmm. and so now, if an opportunity pops up from the market or a change, those hedge funds are there to pull a lever to, like, put the cash cannon on and suck up the homes. And what, what do you mean if a house pops up? Uh, like, when I, when I say, like, if, if there's a uh, decline in the market or something negative happens to the market, right. the hedge funds will put the gas on. And that will fix the market. So basically, buy up, buy up. Buy so up. basically, yeah, yeah. Be, right, right. And then, right. then it'll be harder to buy. Right. Before the last home. housing crash, hedge funds One had, ne had never gone into the housing market. It was mom and pop It's just, investors. it's just something that they didn't do. The market crashed, and I can tell you this: that invitation homes. Yeah. By the time the rest of the country said, oh, Las Vegas and Phoenix and whatnot has yeah. hit rock bottom and prices started to go back up before the rest of the investors from around the world started right. flooding back into the market, Invitation Homes had already had their 2,000 homes and were out the door no, no, back to New York. So the yeah. takeaway here, though, <laughs> yeah, I'm hearing you guys away. right. Take away. I want to make sure I'm hearing you guys right. That when you had 08 or another big crash, right, what happens mm -hmm. is you get up one day, you check out what your appraised value on your house is. It's the biggest asset you own, mm -hmm. and it's going like doo doo boom boom boom. Yep. And it's happening to everybody at the same time. Yes. So you go sell, 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 sell. Yes. So they you were, have no. They were nothing. leveraged upside right. down. But yes. with these hedge funds, what you're saying is, when that starts to happen, they're looking at the opportunity yeah, yeah. to yeah. buy up the buying. inventory. And the first time they did that was the, the was the last housing crash, if and, the, and they they invented the system, so now they have a system down right. to when it happens but, again. Is because what we're the saying. riches always take advantage of crashes. Absolutely, yeah, exactly. One hundred percent. But the thing is, they that, can't acquire more assets. That's how the rich get richer. Companies need to show growth. <laughs> <laughs> companies need to show growth. One kids. So, so that's why they're now building new homes and having them as rentals. Because Who's building new homes? The, hedge, the funds? hedge funds. The hedge funds. Because they do. They've got billions and billions and billions. They'll create the market. They don't give a. Mm. Oh. So anyway, it's so, so interesting. So so is that good? I mean, for it's a society. It's not good for homeowners. Yeah, society, but for societies, because they're that, they're betting everyone's going to be weaning off the teat. Right. Does that is keep, what they're betting on? Does that keep your cost of living lower? No. For to be in a house. I don't know, no, man. Whether you happen, own or not, maybe, we'll find out. Maybe. I don't know. What, it, what it does inhibit is it inhibits people to develop their own like equity or wealth building from right. using a low mm -hmm. rate mortgage. 100%. You know? And I'm going to say this too, is you look at what's going on with investors buying these homes over 3000 uh, homes. It's up, I believe it was up over 200%, 279% from last year's what was? Uh, home buying from investors. And that's what, so you're saying, well, what are they doing with it? Are they going to buy to flip it? Or are they going to buy no, to hold not. the rent? Go rent, ahead, Matt. For renting. Okay. So in Las Vegas, You've got like a seasoned, maybe there's like a dozen or 20 flippers that are consistent. And the, the flippers you should look out for are the ones that have been doing it for like 10 or 15 years. Yeah. They just do it. Yeah. So those the, flipping's harder in town. It's harder, but it's possible. Um, what makes that harder? Just curious. Uh, so, Competition. So you've got to find, you've got to source your own deals, uh -huh. which means that you've got to do direct marketing to people that have homes that are inherited their divorce it's basically like a realtor first come whoever but, gets to but, that client first so, will usually get their business yeah so then what the flipper does is they you know give them some cash and they know that there's a spread and they can sell mm -hmm. the home on the open market <coughs> for top dollar sure now um these hedge funds are buying mostly as rental like flipping's harder yeah but the publicly mm -hmm. traded hedge funds are they they their cost of money is so low yeah that they can make money you know they can make money more long term. Yeah. Well, so let me give you an example. I have an investor that has that if, you know, I went to go to a listing or something like that and their AC was completely broke and it had to be cash or whatever it was. I, you know, I have and and the long and short of it is they had offer pad come over 
And offer pad said, here's what we'll give you on your condo cash after whatever it is. I sent it over to my investor and he basically was like, I can't beat this. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. was um, never possible. Two, two, three years ago, the whole thing was that offer pad would come in 20% low, 25% low below market value. Now they're coming in, they're making such a minimal margin that regular investors are like, it's not yeah. really worth my time because they were going to make still, like five well, grand on it. it. Why the, would you go through that work for five grand? That's the definition of hedge right there. Yeah, but if you, yeah, so absolutely. Let me ask you the question then, Brett, what do you think? Because um, we talk about all the time, the housing market's going up, right? Do we buy, do you sell, whatever. But what I'm hearing, it doesn't sound very likely at all that this market's going to go down anywhere in the next so, five, 10 yeah, years. Yeah, I would say the sad thing is. is Just that, so the fact that we're getting filled like Southern California. Yeah. yeah, that that alone, and now take into other factors, but I think more importantly, it's just the demand of it. Yeah, I think it's, and I don't now. see that slowing. No, and then the, the sad thing is, is that <laughs> um, affordability is going to go away for some people. Right, mm -hmm. and people, it always happens in different markets. Yeah. People are like, we need affordable homes, we need affordability, blah blah blah. But at the end of the day, you know, people, the the sooner that you as an individual take accountability for like getting yourself a home if you want to, you got to get on with it because I think affordability is going away in Las Vegas. Well, there was a news article that came out that was saying that investors are buying these homes. Why? Because they want to guarantee that they get paid with rent. And they're starting to see that people are willing to rent. And because of the competition right now, that they're going to get those rents and there's not going to be any problems. Because, you know, well, like dude, if you know, you know, what's tougher than the housing market here right now to buy a house renting. Yeah, it's really yes. hard. <laughs> and then also, you know? I've, heard, I've heard the stories that like rents are going up when leases are being renewed. Yeah. Let, rents are going up $300 yeah. a month. You know? Yeah, I mean, I'm, starting, I'm seeing a lot of these problems start to come, you know, come full circle where you see a lot of these people that are trying to buy a home. The, the buyers out there, the home buyers that are looking to buy, especially locally, they're kind of being pushed out. And, and I think it's because investors are coming in, even with the opportunities, they're buying up as much as they can. Um, and I'm going to, it's kind of interesting to see what's going to happen. I know that, you know, if you're going to outbid a home or outbid on a property, if you go over list, you're probably going to get that house. Yeah. But, but if you're somebody out there that's just, you know, you don't have a ton of money, you can't go over list. Unfortunately, well, an investor may come in and swoop that up. Yeah. The other know? thing is, I mean, who knows? It's just speculatory, but like if there is another lockdown or something, then what's that going to do for underwriting for people to get mortgages? Yeah. It's going to be horrible again. Yeah. It's going to be real bad. Yeah. You know, it's not going to be any fun balancing all that together. But, yeah. um, I mean, I, I think we had the, I mean, COVID aside, however that shakes out. Um, you, you don't, when you, if you want to live in LA, you rent, right? Yeah. You got to, and that's You're absolutely it's right. just changing. Right. It's changing for, it's going to change for Vegas. So it's if you agree, now. so if you have the theory that I do, which is where that we're going to be, and we are the new Southern California, and you subscribe to that same theory, and most people rent in L.A.? Yeah. Well, your point is the new <laughs> Southern, you know? I grew up in Northern Nevada. Yeah. And even then, I always kind of looked at Vegas, L.A., San Diego, kind of like as the Southern region. Like yeah, so here's the thing. with The mistake I made is, so I'm from Wisconsin originally. I first moved out here, and I thought, like, Vegas and L.A. was the same thing. Yeah. And yeah. California will be the first to tell you, and Vegas will be the first to tell you, no, bro. We're, we're not Southern California. Don't be saying that to us. And Southern California people are like, uh, don't, don't, be, me, don't be saying don't, we're Vegas. Don't get me wrong. It's completely <laughs> like, different. Like, but in the Midwest, the West Coast is the West Coast. Like, it's the same. It but the you point know? is, you've got a huge population within that triangle. Yeah. Huge. Right. I mean, massive, without a doubt. And that's what I'm saying. Bigger than most if, countries. Even if you're going on. I mean, what? California's economy could be like the eighth richest country? Yeah, I think it's like it, the second. It is. Second or okay, third, third or something. Yeah. yeah. So even if you take. 15% of those people and move them over throwing here, man. people out. All right. My wife's from um, California. I am not. I'm Nevadan. But she's from... Um, Nevadan? She's from... Uh, from yeah, if you want to know true Americans. <laughs> and, and, and your two get, attorneys. Get, get I can right see those shirt. conversations at home anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. I object. Get the right <laughs> shirt. Kind it's of nothing like that. that. Uh, but, <laughs> it's nothing like that. But she... No, she was... I met her down here. She, I think she moved here in 14 or 13. Uh -huh. Yeah. And she had a house before that she sold when we got together or whatever here in Vegas. Okay. Right. This year, California <laughs> sent her an income tax bill for like $15,000 saying she sold property in California. Somehow, con somehow confusing this Vegas house with one in Cali. Yeah. So she calls them up and you think like, dude, I don't know. I haven't lived in California for yeah. 10 years. I didn't work there. 
And they're like, oh, well, file all this paperwork, protest paperwork, and then we'll, like, set up a case. Otherwise, we're sending you to collections. I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> are you outrageous. kidding me? That's why people are moving because out of California, out of money, dude. Yeah. So I have a client. That's why people are moving out of California. Yeah, and she says, we should go back to Norton. like, it's so crazy. I have a, I have, <laughs> can you work next, next, next stop, stop, Wyoming, yeah, for me. Exactly. I got next stop, Wyoming, dude. This week. So I had a client, just when the COVID hit, I got a client, and he needed to buy a house for tax reasons and mm. he's a professional sports better and does really well. Like he's a young guy and he's, he pays a lot of taxes in California. Yeah. And then he called me up this week and was like, Matt, I got to get the high rise condo like this year. Like I have to before the end of the tax year. Yeah. Cause he's getting clobbered by California. And he needs, it's, it's insane. He's getting absolutely. It's literally clobbered. insane. You know, so he's he's dude, doing. Dude, we, we don't even have to do anything to get him to come here. We just need to let California keep being California. Yeah. And I think some. <laughs> I guess you people. Think about it. We win by default. I guess people are used <laughs> to like, oh, I don't have any savings because it's natural to give eighty thousand dollars in taxes. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Like crazy. Anyhow. You got something to say? Sorry. Guys. No, 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 no. If you guys, this is the French <laughs> Workbench Podcast. I was just going to say, you guys you are the capitalistic pig. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hit that I'm like. Dan Foyt pissed. <laughs> yeah, right. Hit you that know, like button. If you guys got comments, we got a lot of comments coming in. Also, subscribe to the channel, guys. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, we've been getting a lot of support recently, so I want to say everybody out there that's put out comments, that's, uh, you know, hitting the like button and helping support the channel. We appreciate you guys, everybody out there. So going back to it, you look at investors. Um, investors are looking for that strong return. They made up on the second quarter, they made up 22.8% of all purchases Man. here in Las Vegas. So can I ask you this? What was, do they, you have an average of a purchase pr price that they were paying? No, I don't, but they're, no, okay. I don't, but they're, they're, they're snatching up a lot of uh, townhomes, condos, so, you know, lower, uh, Price condos points. and see that used to be see, the one thing well, that investors wanted to stay away from because you had the HOAs and all that. Yeah, yeah but you got know. guaranteed rents now. It seems like because yeah. people know, like you know, first off, people are, are going to start being evicted, but they weren't being evicted recently. <laughs> so we're gonna. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with how all that so unfolds. We have a, a good friend of mine. I'll get her on here one day. She's a property manager. And okay. And now for rentals, she won't look at any application. She'll tell them up front. I won't look at your application unless everyone's over 700 and you don't have any pets yeah. and you have or a small service dog mm -hmm. and yeah. landlords have the power to be picky and well, wanna, what, yeah, continue. yeah, so they have the ability to be picky. So she didn't really have much problem. And then she would also like select tenants that weren't like all in the casino, like they would be split up. So she didn't have a problem. But why I'm saying this is for these people that are getting the boot out from the, where they're at, they're going to be in a tricky situation because that they, they've they've not been yeah. paying well, they, but they won't have well, their credit affected. And to your point, by to the her, landlord, to her, I mean, when I have dealt with a few clients on this, yeah. like advising them, and I'm like, basically, the law allows you to get first and month's last rent up front, right? Plus first, yeah, it allows you whatever the security deposit is, which is um not more than two months of rent, yeah, I'm like usually one month. All of that, all of that. In your bank account. Yeah. You check the credit score. You check references because you're not in a picky situation. They are. Yeah. And then the government's not going to allow you to evict, which is your only remedy. Yeah, yeah. Or somebody... just, what's my rent? Here's a full year in cash. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can't do that. You can't, can't. do that. No. Why? Well, do you know what? Because the really? uh, NRS Nevada Rise session doesn't allow it. Doesn't allow you to pay a year in advance? You can only get... um. How far? How first, much? Uh, first and end, <laughs> right? But what if you as a tenant volunteer to do that? Oh, yeah. They volunteer, yeah. That's yeah. fine. If they so want to do saying. it, but what you can't if say is If you want to like, get it, you're a tenant. You can't demand it as far as I know, as but I'm saying if you're if a tenant, in a competition and you, situation, and you yeah. Be, yeah, you want to be and you don't want to worry about your yeah. credit score. Well, you could do a year Boom. lease. Yeah. Another way you could think about it too is you could just, if you were, because people think investment, they will always want to do, um, <laughs> if they have investment property to rent it out to tenants. Yeah. But you can also do something like if I have title, clean title of the property, right? Assuming you do, or work out the bank, you can be like, look, I'm going to sell you a three year, like, um, um, uh, life is it's not called life stay. I'm forgetting the right term for it. Basically I'm selling you my right to use the property mm -hmm. for three years. It's kind of like rent, but it's different. Huh. Three, two, five, whatever. Huh. You do it as a deed, not as a, um, as a rent. And it should keep you out of the uh, um, rental laws in that situation hmm. because you're basically splitting up your deeds. Now the person that comes in and buys like huh. that kind of deal, they would still, you don't have much control of the property, right? Because basically you're selling your interest. But by law, they can't do anything that's going to cause like um, excessive damage. damage or, okay. or, because you have a future interest back. Gotcha, but the way gotcha. of parsing out, you don't have to act like the landlord. 
Dude, right. that's kind of smart as hell. I'm mean, going to do that with tokenization. Yeah. And somebody would be interested in it, too, because if you're talking about housing prices going up, you kind of lock in your huh. rate at that point. Well, you look at some of these renters out there. I'm sure you look at that they were maybe going month to month. Maybe they weren't going all in where they're saying, well, I'm going to see what the market's going to do. Now, you, I'm sure you have landlords going, you know what? Now's the time to strike where we're going to send you a new lease. And we know that there's nothing out there to rent. So if you're looking month to month and you just wanted to go, and there's a lot of renters that probably yeah. do that. They exceed their time period. Then they're on a month to month every time. Mm -hmm. they, so yeah. now they're looking at it going, well, if I send them this lease and I increase rents, chances are they're going to sign that lease. Probably. And chances are yeah. I'm going to be able to get, get that money, that extra money that's there because they know the scarcity of rental properties is just out there with, right with now. With the eviction, right? Mm -hmm. So what are you talking about with the ability I'm talking to about, Yeah, I'm talking about all of it, encompassing all of it, meaning when the with the eviction coming up, the eviction moratorium. I just, now I, just missed, I just missed what you said in the beginning. Sorry. I was trying to follow. Well, no, what I'm saying is <laughs> <laughs> people are going to probably be willing to go two feet in if they were a month to month or if they were kind of considering maybe not renting or buying or let's say that they don't really know what their plan is. They may say, you know what, go ahead and send me that lease. I'll sign another year and additional to that, I will also pay whatever increase in rents you have because we know if I go out and start looking for a house to rent, there's yeah. nothing out there. No. Yeah, probably. They, I mean, the, well, listen, the if, you, if you're a good tenant and you're quiet and don't cause any problems and pay your rent in time, they're going to offer to renew it to you first. They might say, hey, we want to increase it, whatever it is. Yeah. But they should probably, yeah, I mean, it would people, probably be in their best interest to right. at least offer to somebody they know is a good tenant already and pays on time. Yeah, they're already doing that, though. It's when they have to replace it. Yeah. Especially yeah, if you yeah, got yeah, like yeah, a yeah, yeah. big condo. You always yeah, no, that. you're right. Yeah. No. I just think that, that there's an opportunity where if you can strike like these landlords are doing, one, the eviction moratoriums just ended. So now that it's like, you know what? Now you're going to probably start to see people really get back into a lease that maybe was on a month to month is all I'm saying. Because people don't want to feel obligated. And now I, I, feel I don't think they're going to be able to find that. So you can wish that all you want. And what, a month to month option? Yeah. I mean, well, don't they any, anything that I see that's short-term rental well, if you're good is usually double oh, the rent price yeah. of what it normally is. Yeah. And good luck yeah, finding actually, them. Actually, like, you know there's any short-term rentals. We, ha we have buyers all the time that are waiting yeah. for their new home to be built, and they can't find literally squat. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's the, that's what I'm saying is they know or that you're there's nothing yeah. out there for options. These investors know that buying these homes, that that's an opportunity plus. Sure, but what I'm saying is those month-to-months are almost double what a normal lease would be though. So yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. you can do that, but if you want to pay double, Legally, go for when you it. Legally, when you're on a month to month or whatever. You know, it's profitable for the landlord. That means <laughs> every month you have, they have the ability to give them two months notice that you're raising, yeah. the, raising the prices. So mm -hmm. let's go, let's go talk about something else. Um, we're going to, we're going to look at, uh, is this a normal housing market right now? And we know that there's no, Matt's going to give us a little bit of rundown. <laughs> I don't, you know, right. you can go in depth, Matt, but you're pretty, yeah, no. you know, you uh, can take a look at it. normal? There's, uh, <laughs> Go ahead, Matt. There's like 3,100 homes okay. uh, on the market. 3,100 homes on the it's market. It's been creeping up slightly. Okay. Um, in terms of like activity, uh, things, I mean, it's it's changed a little bit over the past two months. Where, okay. Um, I'm sorry, can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. You said 3,100 homes? Yeah. yeah. Is it is it on this chart or is it just, uh, did you no, just know? No, I don't have uh, the I need, data. I need, your, I need access to your keypad to get okay. in there. Okay. But like the thing is, is um, what I would say, yes. Yeah, tell, me, tell me what you want me to do and I'll do it for you. Go ahead. No, so, uh, hang on, let's go on here. So if you look here, so, so far this year, <laughs> we, uh, this is the beginning of the year. The yeah. median house price was 330. Yeah. And it's gone up 14% up to... 355 okay which is a monster jump f so far this year it's gone up the no, median that's home price is that encompassing 14 and a half percent that's including all the homes all the homes all the that's homes. condos no all the single family homes. single family homes okay yeah. so if we go on the condos like let's go to townhouses so townhouses have gone up this year the median price was 236,000, and now it's gone up to 248 which is up 10 percent, which goes like Normally, investors and people want a single family home because the HOA is lower. Right. And they, they own like that, that parcel and it's not split between a community. Right. But um, a 14.5% increase in homes so far this year is a significant jump. Yeah, it's a significant jump. Now, we're prob I think if it, um, my hunch is it's slowed down, slowed up a bit. Yeah. Um, but in terms of when I say slowed up, it's slowed up from being white hot. And now it's just like really hot. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, 
<laughs> so it's almost like we've been saying for months that there's no going to be some huge crash. It'll just might calm down well, a little. Look, do you but, know, yeah, yeah, this is, yeah, yeah. but this is the new question. normal. Yeah. I got a question. What you just said? You said how many houses are on the market today? Thirty one hundred. Yeah. Does that include the townhouses and those? No, things? that's just uh. So that okay. So let's get that single it. family. Yeah. So hang on a sec. Uh, closed sales so far this year. Pay my bill tab up there, Dan. <laughs> right. Dan's so, got to pay his bills. Yeah, how many closed sell this year? Is that on three years? Can you just That's get a one year? That's the entire MLS. It's 38,000. Can you just get a one year? Now? Yeah. So look at mid-2020 to now. So that's 38,000 that for up. the year. But then if we go, we can go back to... 38,000 sold for the year. Yes. Okay. Of that 38,000, you guys are saying 3,000 was hedge funds in the last... Quarter. The, the second quarter. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's a significant so it's amount. So big chunk going yeah, on. Yeah, it's a big, big chunk. chunk. Yeah, big chunk. Big that's chunk. what ten ten percent. Well, as Brett, as you're saying, as we go from white hot to really hot. Yeah. So what, that's going to be what, more enticing for them to buy more. What's really right? hot? Really hot is. Yeah, homes, that's what I'm saying. So to, any decrease that happens is for really price hot, is going to really be really hot. Is homes going to contract in two? Dude, I'm telling these hedge funds. Five days. They don't round, oh, dude. You know. I mean, they they got a system in place they figured out ten years ago, and they're just been getting better at it. Is no, a, um, people don't realize, dude. <laughs> I would hope. I would hope. Well, I would hope over the next sixty days we may have a slight increase in supply, but we'll see what. Well, they're happens. building again. No, not the building. I'm talking about like releasing homes that should have been sold because of a tenant issue. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, you're or right. That, that that sort of. But thing. that's still going to take. I mean, I was just looking on the news here. And also, were... another thing that might may free up some homes is it, if some people haven't figured out and they are still in forbearance, which you know, is pretty slack on their behalf because they've had like a year and a half, two years to sort out some income. Well, I got, I got a question on that too. Maybe you guys can answer is what if you have these landlords that actually were making an arrangement, if they did have a mortgage on their current re- investment property that they made arrangements, is there, in, you know, arrangements made for investment properties to, you know, keep put themselves oh, sure. on forbearance? So are they really going to be in the same position where they're behind on oh. their mortgage. You know what I mean? Maybe. Well, hold on. Say, say it one more time. Mortgage or rent? Sorry. Mortgage. 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 Because if you're... <laughs> How do I get in this thing? The He's rent. got too many things going on <laughs> in his yeah. life, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the mortgage focus, part of it... Focus? Renaissance man. Continue. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Renaissance man. Plethora of thoughts. <laughs> so it's more of like, you know, is the landlords taking advantage of things that if they have investment properties or even people that have second homes, are they... Are they able to put themselves on a, in a position where they made arrangements with their own servicer or or investor to not have to worry about having uh, you know the foreclosure process? We know that foreclosure <laughs> process is not going to just happen right away. Where if it does happen, well, right, that's what that's yeah, the point I was about to make. Yeah, th- it's going to yeah. take time. You got to go through the judicial part of it and right, go through and the. I, I can it, get into those boring details, but you, but you, it's not going to be I like next month. There, all things. these properties are going to be there because. So hold on, I can I can. St- just with mortgages alone before 2019 or even evictions, evictions are a little more difficult because they happen more often. Sure. But if you have a mortgage, um, look, there was a case, guy had a house in Lake Tahoe, right? And I uh, kind of took over this case or whatever. Lake Tahoe, bought it in 08. If you guys have been to Lake Tahoe, very nice. Yeah, on, very on nice area. Yeah. He um, didn't pay a single mortgage payment for over 10 years. Wow. And then he got into a mediation, settled again. 10 years he was living in this house. Before he finally had to pay something on settlement. The point is things can get stalled, right? But I, <laughs> but um, <laughs> point being is, yeah. but right, um, but um, no kidding, man. Wow. And then another interesting point you brought up, Dan, as far as like the process, we were talking about hedge funds coming in, right? Yeah. They're releasing this um, uh, stay in evictions. Um, if you notice, like I've told you about the client I've had, single clients, it's kind of a pain when you have one or two houses that you're managing on your own and you're trying to evict because it's a legal process you have to, and they don't like you, the bad guy, sure. right? Hedge fund are organized and know what they're doing. So they could come to you and say, look, you got this tenant in here. You don't like dealing this property. I'll just gobble it up. I don't get, you know, and they'll buy stick that then in-house they'll be like, see ya, on it. see ya. Here they'll comes our team. Dude, in-house. you want to know how the hedge funds got all of the business? Back in 2013, they came to all the top listing agents for the short sales in every single city. Right. And they said, We'll take anything built in this year on up, which was like a 30 year period. Right. We'll pay cash, no home inspection, or I should say their home inspection consisted of coming in measuring for carpet and paint. 
and you want to have an attorney do the short sale do the actual work for yeah, it that costs thirty five hundred dollars we'll pay for the attorney that, we'll hey, pay dude and it was and, like and, 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 and you as a listing a agent and you as a listing agent how about you guys write the offer for us so you guys are can double I, ending I, as the agent yeah, yeah. Right. guess who the first investor was you turned to yeah can i tell you a story right i i started that and then uh, <laughs> he did. He, he, he did. In fact, in fact, I was talking to I was talking to Dan Ooh. French today, and Dan French goes, "How'd you meet Matt?" I go, "One yeah. day yeah. I'm in my office, and someone goes, there's a guy sitting out in your lobby waiting for you.'" Yeah, I just Matt Shields. I, 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 Invitation I, I, I ninja kicked all the office doors. And, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and so let me I was tell like, you, "Who's this let guy?" Me tell you a story about that. So hey, this, were you wearing your cowboy hat when you were all? <laughs> I was. I was dude, sitting, I'm, I'm, like, oh, I'm like, who the hell is this guy sitting in my lobby? No, I used to wear ties. He was at Blackstone, dude. So then. Um, so then there was this one really big firm that I'm yeah. not going to say it was an attorney firm and a real estate company yeah. and then they were like making a ton of money and they had a ton of homes and so I went to them and they were charging I would say I would say look you can have 6% and then they charged a 1% fee yeah. as, as to like process it which went to the attorney and they had tons of escrow junk fees yeah. as uh -huh. well so they were robbing everyone Oh yeah, and then they, I said, we want to look at all your homes first. And they said, well, we, we can do that for like 2%. If you can do 2% and give us give them an extra 2% acquisition cost. And then I went back to my boss and I was like, they want 2%. And then he's like, sure, let's do it. But we want all of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then wow. I said, they, yeah, they, they did. I said, I said to them, if you could put that in writing, then we'll do it. And they would never put that in writing. Because they, what? they don't want liability. They, they would charge two percent instead of one percent for a short sale processing fee. Right. But we had to look at all the homes first and had first opportunity mm, to buy I them. Gotcha. Yeah, you but can't. That's uh, that, that was like super crooked. Yeah, yeah but because yeah. Um, in all kinds of ways you get it was wrong. Then. That's it was, the whole point it was, of mm -hmm. the it was, it was wrong all the way through, but it happened. Yeah. You know? yeah. So so either, either way, the hedge funds have the money and they know what 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 makes people move is they steamroll you with money. Period. And they have the money to do it. So, I mean, Dan, you've been posing this question for months now. Do you buy or do you not? Right? And it seems like you may be losing think, the opportunity think, to buy. I think affordability is going to evaporate. 100%. And, and Dan, this is the new normal. And yeah. if you can take Telling advantage you, of the situation, uh, you should consider buying if you can figure out a plan or need help to make a plan to make it happen. Or I don't see it changing. Well, or look at, the, look at the other side of the coin. You have to have a place to live. So what's your other alternative? Well, Renting, listen, which listen. is even worse. Let me say this yeah. though. I think a lot of people, a <laughs> yeah. lot of people believe in the crash or they believe in a correction though. And so when you say, do you buy or do you rent? Now, we, we all can say in Vegas, so, let me say what, this. Yeah. In Vegas, it might be a position where we have to buy, which is fine. But overall, is it is there other places where it's not the same Vegas market? We can't just say- I don't say know, man. Vegas is not on the West Coast. Vegas not is not on the, the West sale. Coast. West yeah. Coast is kind of the same up and down the West. Well, California, because they want people out of there, so they keep st uh, tax prices. But from Seattle down to to uh, Southern Arizona, yeah, it's the same thing going on because of that main machine that is California that's throwing everybody out. Yeah, and that's where they're going. Yeah. So how do we put a no? I'm just playing. <laughs> put a wall up. <laughs> yeah. I'm just playing. Actually, a lot of people from California support us. Well, this guy's you know, trying I to steal you know. my money. Yeah. I'm just playing, dude. Because they get it. I mean, like, listen, dude. They're living in a pretty good place. The weather's I'm, beautiful. I'm from people California. are beautiful. Yeah, you're from California. <laughs> so. But, dude, you know, like when you piss off your own people enough, the people can well, will get to a point where they're like, forget it, dude. I'll just go next door. Or they I, don't. I mean, they're forcing you think, it. Think, but sometimes I think that they're not. They don't even realize what's going on. Yeah. I think some people, because some people that are native Californians just think that's how it is everywhere. And I'm like, no, there look, is a well, huge I mean, you'll have a segment of, of, of that where people will never pay attention, pay attention to anything outside of where they're at. I mean, people yeah, like right. that in the Midwest. I they, just have conversations <laughs> with people and I'm like, do you understand that's, that sounds absurd. Like, yeah. I don't go crazy, but um, yeah. well, look, it, I, 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 let's be honest though. Like with all of us here. We're all making money from people from like California. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, man. I, mean, I won't so, deny. So, I mean, that's probably a staple of where our business is coming from. You got California, East Coast, West Coast, mm -hmm. mainly uh, so, a lot of out-of-state so buyers. So there's so many people move, like the other day, last week, I went to get a smoothie and meet someone. And then there was a bunch of people talking and a guy was moving here from Arizona and he was really fed up with his agent and he yeah. said he was an idiot. And I didn't, I was just telling about some stuff it was, 
What kind I, of smoothie did you get? Uh, it was like a he- healthy protein smoothie. Blueberry or? I can't remember. I, okay. I just like, you know, just had to feed the machine. <laughs> you get and then, uh, <laughs> so then what happened feed was. Feed the machine. <laughs> exactly. So then, but then nom, I, got, nom, I, nom, I, nom. I went and got a smoothie and I got an $800,000 buyer. And I'm meeting him tomorrow to look at home. Is he from California? No, he's from Arizona. People oh, Arizona. are coming from all over. See, yeah. and that's what I'm saying you know? is how many all people, over. but it, it does raise the question. If you're already living here in Vegas and you already have established your family, or let's say yeah, you've you established- buy a house. You, you got to you because got to you're not, look, you can't sell. Arizona is interesting because Arizona is probably on the same uh, so, playing field as we are. Let as me, far yeah, as let me, let me, put the, let me put this in the context. The bro, the, the one of the owners and the broker of our, of our brokerage. Basically has made a deal and he's gone on Facebook and everything publicly and said, I'm sick of people always saying that we're going to have a crash. And so I did a survey. What does people consider a crash? And they consider home prices going down 25%. And he said right now, today, in the next three to five years, if you believe that the home that it's going to crash down to 25%, he goes, I got $10,000 right now. No, was it $25,000? It was 10 it's grand. 10, 10 grand. Years. For three years, and he's basically saying, if it does go down 25% in three yeah, years, I will give grand. you 10 grand. But the only way you can participate in this is if you put 10 grand on the table, well, too, which means if it doesn't, you lose 10 grand. It's not, not one person. And it's not going to. And so the fact, put your money where your mouth is. Well, when the fact say he's that. talking like that, right? And people. Is, is, is more of a single that it's not going to crash than it is. Let me explain. Yeah. In 08, you never see the bubble. People th- get this idea when they're in, when they're in a bubble that's. Yeah proof and then it's not going to yeah divorce. no i get it Believe people me, are was, saying yeah. i'm scared because they have ptsd of what happened right is more indication that it's not going to happen because it means more are not participating in mm-hmm. a bubble that's not there mm-hmm. except for crypto <laughs> <laughs> not well yeah is it go well, up and down and manipulated absolutely I but it's not a bubble when, when he said that a well, bubble would mean that it's gonna, gonna, it's gonna have an end and it's not gonna when, end when he said that just getting uh, putting the 10 grand out but like so <laughs> I feel like it should go on exactly what it was fire or something i bet 10 grand that the market will not I got go the down to back it up 25 <laughs> percent in three years uh-huh. and then i thought to myself well probably wouldn't take that bet but <clears> i thought about offering would you take 500 dollars cash up front as an option to activate that bet because I wouldn't bet 10 grand, but I would bet $500 well, for a laugh. Let's, I mean, it's true, <laughs> you know? right? No, I mean, it's true. The 10K you know, upside. You look at. Um, but I wouldn't take the 10K bet. I wouldn't take the 10 because I don't believe that's going to happen. Yeah, you yeah I wouldn't either. That's why no one's taking them up on it. Yeah. Put your money where your mouth is. Oh, you won't? That's, that's what I thought. So, so they're <laughs> across the board, so everybody's just saying. Yeah. I didn't, I'm not the one saying that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. not you. I'm just saying. <laughs> Joe. Crypto. I like to look at you. <laughs> Across the board, people are saying, or not people, but articles are saying, I had a lot of people sure. that, that actually <laughs> look at some of this data, they're stating that a lot of these properties that are out there, that the inventory is starting to increase, but it's obviously not increasing here in Vegas. Now, they're, what I was reading was six and a half months supply is typically something that would be needed for builders to kind of say, okay, well, we're now, you know, we're not going to have that same everybody's going to come to us and we're going to, we're going to get what we want. We're not going to be able to, inf- you know, go over price or over list of what their current uh, selling the house for. So six and a half months supply of <clears> houses, <throat> new houses of, of, of existing homes yeah. will level the playing field against uh, builders because builders are, you know, you go to a builder today, you can get anything you want, right? I mean, you can, you know, I'm not you as a consumer, the builder can get anything yeah. they want. Yeah. They can, Lot premiums are out, out of this world right now. Dude, you know, you got a lot of things stupid. happening, right? They're over and, and they're strategically planning out how to uh, invest or not invest, but get people to invest with them or buying into their homes because they want to maximize their profits, especially with all these uh, costs and everything going up. They're trying to pass that to the consumer. Well, so, to answer the question I have is if you have exploiting a, that, will we ever have a, pl- a place where we're going to be at a six month supply again here? Because At some point in the future, yeah, I think so absolutely, yeah, absolutely, man. But I don't think it'll be at the cost of home prices severely going down. What do you think, Matt? Uh, a six month supply. Because I think that you you look at the data. We're still at one and a half, what what one point four month supply? But we've been like that, Matt. Do you know during the foreclosures what was the month supply in the market? Do you know? Oh, it was like nine months. Was yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, during so, the, yeah. it was yeah. And, so and, and I think I think I being, think six months is a stretch. But don't you think six months is a healthy market? Like no, that's a, that's I a think very, that's a little no. Between three to six months yeah. is supposed to be well, more I of think, a balanced market. I think we 
If you start crossing six, you're kind of... Well, we're, we're talking about housing affordability, mm-hmm. right? And we're talking about, you know, how we've become in, like, Southern California. Mm-hmm. The thing about it, too, and even Phoenix, I mean, when we're not there. I mean, we will be like that. But you look at those cities. What do they do? They spilled over the next valley. And spilled yeah. over the next See, valley. See, that's what I'm saying. Everyone's like, oh, so home prices are unaffordable. Home prices are unaffordable. Because of no. what? Water? No, because uh, we're not ready yet. There has to be... Because of our government. Be- no, because... We've got to get ready. Is no, what I'm no, saying. No, no. Like, go. What's going to make it ready is that the home, the price of homes are going to increase to a point where people are going to say, I'm going to drive 45 minutes over the valley. Bullhead side city. Of the valley. Like, people right. are going to agree to commute. Based on Pahrump. the affordability of the homes. Right. Watch in the next ten years, prompt quadruples in population. Yeah, I, I call it here first. You're to here yeah, first. What a great town. I, you're to here first, kids. Well, there's a bunch of room room left in the south. I'd say South Vegas kind of. Oh, Henderson's. It's going to go all the way back up to the mountain around Inspirada. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of growth there. Yeah, That's yeah. going to be the biggest growing zip code in. Yeah, so Henderson. we're not at capacity. No, but and even gonna, when we get at capacity, we about, have other valleys we I can think, spill into. I think it's yep. going to take about five years. Yeah. If we continue at this, when you drive through Phoenix, you go through one valley. Yeah. Go up a little hill, go in the next valley. It's kind of like similar to the way yeah. this geography is here. They just kept going. Yeah. I think a lot of investors and people in general were banking on having this uh, this moratorium for the foreclosure for moratorium actually take in effect because then it, they felt that that's going to ease up that market. Um, well, but, let's just get it over with. I mean, how many times can you yeah, extend but it, something? But it's not, it's mean? not though, because the thing is, is investors or servicers are willing to help with, uh, you know, helping out with uh, some type of either forbearance or that now they're extending the loans, right? They went from 30 to 40 year loans. Well, you're talking about homeowners. Yeah. I mean, cause not renters, well, not paying well, renters, their renters don't rent own, and, don't own the property. They're, I know they're looking so. for them to foreclose like they did back yes. in, in the day. Yes. But what I'm saying, yeah, 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 exactly. So, so they're not going to foreclose though. So I don't know if there's going to be a huge market that's going to say, okay, that's going to contribute for us to have that six month or three to six month supply. Mm. Like you were saying, I don't know what's going to contribute. And to even that. if there are, there's 10 investors lined up for it. Yeah. For each one. So, I mean, it's supply and demand. It's really not rocket science or I wouldn't do it. Trust me. Matt, Matt you got anything else to say on this housing market? Uh, no, just, I mean, if you if you have an idea you want to buy a home or, or stop renting, yeah. get a plan. And, you know, happy to help. A lot of what I do is like problem solving yeah. and planning and giving people goals and making them feel good about renting if they are renting. Sure. And they want to buy because they have a plan. And we know all everything we got to do, the punch list, to get them you, the approval to get them a home, the best home possible. You, you guys get a lot of clients, and I'm just going to ask you because uh, there's a lot of people that challenge or have questions that challenge maybe what you're saying. Like, oh, you know what? I've read this or I see this or somebody's told me. I'm this. always open to have a conver- conversation, even if somebody calls and says, "Hey, I, you know, I, I, I kind of agree with you. I'm looking to buy a house. I kind of agree with you." And blah blah blah. Here's my issues. I'm willing to always have an open conversation about it. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, you I mean, I, I, I always say this instead of like trying to argue somebody or combat them with whatever it is, I always say, okay, you said that what makes you feel what you're saying right now? What, what facts mm. or is, is do, do you draw this conclusion to that makes you feel this way? Right. And when you kind of work it that way, People don't really have anything based on, well, it's my opinion. And right. I'm like, well, I do the seven days a week, so you cannot listen. I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm not trying to argue with people. No, I, just, I just think that there's, you know, there's some objections. I'm trying to be informative to what I know based off of my knowledge, man. I mean, you ask me about anything else in this world, I don't know. But yeah. you ask me about Las Vegas real estate, what's up? Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a big investment that most people make, the biggest they make in their lifetime. So is that all you get? Like, basic, I mean, people are going to object to you, Matt, but I'm just saying, you, you for the most part, you're giving them the right information. No, I mean, there's no... The thing is, is I'm just a conduit of, like, getting something exactly. done. And so I don't have, like... People don't object to me because I'm just giving them information. Sure. And they can do what they will. Mm-hmm. And it's... Whatever they do is what they do. My, my duty to them is just to show them what's going on specific to their particular life. Whether you agree or not, it's up to do. you. We're just no, providing yeah. you That's the information all. based on what I, we know. Yeah. Well, you use the word conduit, which I think conduit. best, best That's describes a, word. a professional yeah, that, but capacity. That's, 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 that, yeah. Okay, conduit. Representing someone's interest, that, not yours. But the sadly, most Fiduciary. agents don't okay. act as a conduit. Oh, 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 oh. Got some leaks. Yeah, most Law school right around the corner. Conduit, Sign conduit's Sign you up. The, the highest goal to have. Like, we... Agents affect the transaction and how they conduct it and how they perform their role as a conduit. 
and how hard they represent their now clients. He's, now he's just you know? yeah. taking victory laps. Now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now he's just taking victory laps. <laughs> 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 That's not the case, man. Yeah, he's flexing over here with his words. <laughs> and then, the other Matt's like, and then the conduit. <laughs> yeah, and then, I thought, the thing is, my job's very easy. My job's very easy if someone's ill-equipped, yeah. you know, to like yeah. handle the situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then they're fucking dead. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. So, oh my god. That's fun. That's funny as hell. If you guys haven't hit that part. like button, hit the like button. Send us any Subscribe. comments. Bing, bing. Subscribe. Matt or sorry, Brett, do that again. Bing bing. <laughs> like <laughs> bing. Subscribe. Bing. <laughs> we appreciate you guys very much. Uh, um so and, and also too, like, you know, we really take our jobs very serious, all of us here in this, this room. I know it sounds, you know, kind of cliche, but we really do. We, I know I wear a t shirt all the time, but I yeah. really know what I'm talking about. Well, listen. <laughs> we we appreciate you guys and we would love to earn your business. So if somebody's out there looking for real estate or financing or even an, an attorney, we'd love to hear from you guys. So please you know, if you want to put those comments, if somebody comes across this video, because yeah. we're here to also, you know, extend our hand yeah. as what we do. And, you know, we're very appreciative, you know? Yeah. Right. They'll exactly. have a conversation with anybody about Super real estate for free good. any day of the week. Yeah. Right? I love talking about it. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so let's go into this. Um, we're going to talk about money talk because uh, I think a lot of people want to know what's going on and we're going to just kind of delve from real estate here for a second. And uh, we got Mr. Joe Dragon. He's going to kind of uh, have a conversation here with Brett. And Brett's just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hold that. <laughs> it's like a vice. Money. Oh, oh, it's I'm a gas. Waiting. I'm going to unleash the beast here in a second. What, what are we, <laughs> are we getting into the crypto? <laughs> yeah. Is that oh, what we're getting into? Right? Yeah. I've been grabbing <laughs> for this. Can I try some? <laughs> What's in that? Brett? Yeah, that was. Well, oh some, my God. Brett, you got, you're going to have a heart attack over here, man. That's what that bottle says. Bitcoin. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> Let's all settle right. down oh, now. This, it's right. a Saturday right. morning. We don't need let's, so much energy. Let's talk about this for Those a second. Red lines. All right. Let's talk about this for a second. What's going on in the cryptocurrency world, Brett? And go. <laughs> <laughs> well, as if you follow crypto, no. If you didn't, well, here's a news flash for you. It went all the way up to sixty five thousand, and then the next two months, it went all the way back down to like twenty nine thousand. Okay. Now Bitcoin currently is at like forty one to forty two thousand. So a lot of people, and when I say a lot of people, I mean the people that I follow on, on Twitter um, that have huge trading groups and blah, blah, blah. You can believe it or not, but if you use Fibonacci levels and stuff like that, which is we're starting the second leg of the bull run. This yeah. one, they're anticipating between 100 to 120 grand. Could hit it, could not hit it. It's crypto. At the end of the day, I'm the first to say it gets manipulated at this point, and is it considered like a stock though? Because it seems like yeah, that's the question. Somebody of, comes out and what says, do you mean "stock." Well, it's just a like commodity. Stocks. I would a say, commodity. well, it, it depends. So different coins do different things, and there are different blockchains that do different different and, utilities. And, and do, but Bitcoin primarily should is just like a store of value. So yeah, what is what is the um, what is the underlying reason for creating these currencies? In your words, what is the what is the objective? That's a good question. Well, okay, so a lot of these currencies are blockchains that do something, right? They have a utility. Like one is called Link, and what Link essentially does is it takes all the documents that you have, like for your files, for like look how many files and documents you have for one case, right? Right. So it basically, to, even if it's stored digitally, what it does is it takes all of that and it's an oracle that puts it in the blockchain. Right. And so, blockchain so, people are peer to peer. So, so in that in that in that sense, it's called a coin, yeah. but but in that sense, it's like a stock because the value of it is increasing based on the demand, based on the use of it, the use case and all those different things. Yeah, but why isn't it why is it not just a um highly because, advanced security software system? Which is a, it's, which it's, is a product, right? That's not like correct. It's it's well, there's a lot of companies out there that aren't um a stock. I mean, they're not like so, on the publicly okay. traded. So this is this is basically um, what people just feel the value of it is right now. I mean, like any, so, like anything else. I mean, but it's a different market. For and, them. and you're on top of this all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So, well, try to be. Is the goal then still that we're going to have an alternative currency to the U.S. dollar or oh, the pound? You guys still use yeah, pounds? I think the dollar. <laughs> I believe that in 20, 25 years, the U.S. dollar won't be around, and the world currency yeah. will be Bitcoin because because it's a standard it's a standard store of value. Now there needs to be a second layer, which I mean that 
Bitcoin is not feasible for a lot of payments and the normal, a lot of transactions, but look at like gold, right? You don't take a bar of gold and go to the grocery store and buy your groceries. You use your credit you card, sure you use a dollar, you, you, you do wanted. whatever it is. But gold is like a wanted. store of value. I but the thing about gold <laughs> is that more gold can be mined. Bitcoin, right. there's going to be 21 million that will ever be created. Yeah, but and that, 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 that's but it. But hold on a second. Hold on so a second. scarcity So you're it. talking about, so that is still the goal here. We're going to have alternative currency. Correct. In my view, that's exactly why this is a bubble, because I think that is 100% impossible. Then I, because then and that's you can believe pull. that, and, well, no, this, and, and this, I mean, that's, this is why, though. Listen, I don't really have that discussion anymore, because now we're talking about fundamentally two different ideas on, on the viewing of it. And if you have that, I totally respect that. And, but we can and, talk about why, and, right? And, and to yeah. be honest with you, the evidence is in your corner right now. So you win right now. But it's just, but, uh, but to me, I just believe but here's that why. with the future and the things that... It, here's why. I don't think it's physically impossible, right? Mm -hmm. But if you, wanted to, if you wanted a currency, the currency can, cannot be moving around like Bitcoin is. We agreed to have a stable currency. Correct. But you're, you're, you're looking at something that is 5% of the world right now. Right. So right, that's a, the problem. A, as a, so right now, yes, that's what I'm saying. If you want to talk about the evidence right now, you're right. But but so that's the problem. But, but that's, to me, that's the problem. So what would you need? How much percent of the world would you need? You need a lot, right? You need like thirty percent. Okay, well then I'll counter that. Counter that with saying seventy five percent of the world lives in poverty. Okay, and they don't have well, bank how, accounts. How about, how about just, they, don't, they don't have a store. Of how value. about so just, now you can carry your own store of value that doesn't. That how doesn't get manipulated this? like your like your nation's currency, and you can carry it in your wallet. But how about just this country, right? How about just country? Forget the rest Amer of the world. America is one small piece. Right. My point is you'd have to get some big players, some big company players, there some are. big S&P 500. There are. Dumping a ton of money into it, You right? will. You Here's will. the problem. Mm -hmm. That would eliminate the need for the Fed, right? No, the government doesn't loses control if they the government is. Listen, do you want right. to know why the price went from sixty five down to down to twenty nine? Because there's been a bunch of control. There's been a bunch of fud out there that you know bad news that they're spreading and trying to spread and things like China shutting down their their miners to do and all these things. But all that, do, like, what I'm trying to say is this: but, yeah. nobody can control it, and nobody can stop it. But I, that's it's, where it's I disagree. Already, that's already, where I disagree. Nope. Because the U.S. government can control it. Nope. Because you said big companies. They can try. Big companies have to invest. Would you agree? S and P five hundred big uh, mega companies. How they, easy they need to invest to what? To make they the need, price They need to start up? using this this uh, digital currency to no, make it stable. They'll be forced. Right. Sooner or later, they'll be forced. Who will be forced? S and P government everything. That's what I'm saying. Is Why is it? I like, believe it's something that you can't stop at this point. So if well, you I, if, I, if I you say, believe that, I mean, you can stand in the way. But to me, the most amount of money I've made in my life was being ahead of the curve. Yeah, and but I you have see to understand. This as being, you have to understand. We've created a hundred year system where we use the Fed to control and manipulate. Nothing the like economy. Bitcoin has ever. Like that's my whole point. Which is, I would suggest anybody out there go and read a book called The Bitcoin Standard, and that the whole first half of that book is talk about monetary policy and well, money since the beginning of time and how every single civilization has manipulated it. So here's what they do. They bring a currency on and make it stable at first just to manipulate it at the end. The way I look yeah, at but Bitcoin the reason is for it's manipulated at the first reason for to be stable at the end. But the reason for manipulation is so we don't go into a crazy depression, which what would have happened so I get in that. 08. And dude, that's, that's a fair argument. At this point, Bitcoin is very, very manipulated and to be used as the currency around the world would be asinine right now. I agree. But what I'm telling you is, we're going there, whether you like it or not. But see, I, <laughs> but within I, our lifetime, I disagree because it's not the all locomotive. It is, all it is is a switch of belief system. What if happens? I, if I was, hold on, if I was to take a twenty dollar bill and set it right here, and a napkin and set it right here, what's the difference? They're two pieces of paper. But why is one worth oh, twenty dollars and one's worth one worth because nothing? All my because all Because collectively, as a whole, we say that this piece of paper is worth twenty dollars. Well, all and my this experience, is, all your is experience is a in life. Right, but once you the, know that you trust but that you once don't trust that, the. What I'm telling you is that belief system is switching by the day, and the whole new generation here's coming up. The point: if Congress passes a law, which I think they'll be forced to do, that says sure. if you are in the S and P 500, they're going to do everything they can to stop you it. You cannot do this. They're going to do everything they can to stop it. Who is? But it's the government. But it's speculation. But I'm telling you, it's run right. by the people, and you can't stop the will of the people. Okay. Period. Well. Um, it's not going to happen overnight, and there's a lot of things we wrong. With it. I got a question. We're getting a lot of stuff. Sure. I got a question. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. What happens <clears throat> if we lose power? 
And we, we, One, we, 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 we discuss hey, that. We what, discuss what's going to happen, though? So, yeah, we discussed that the other day on the phone. Then you can't get access to I said any that's, of your that, that's, coins that's, or any of your Fair enough. That's, cryptocurrency. That's, that's, that's the one... That's the one argument that I've asked. I mean, I even know somebody who sits on the Bitcoin. Well, you can't do Bit- that with the bank either. Dude, I even know somebody who sits on the that Bitcoin console. Before. Like, he has a say in what happens with Bitcoin. Isn't, He's, isn't, right? Isn't there and I can weapon? tell you that all these people, I ask them this question, and it's, and it's the same answer, which is I go, so Bitcoins run on a power grid. Now, what happens if that power grid you're in, in, you're in gets shut down? How do you access your Bitcoin? And they're like, you're effed. Yeah. So legit, legit, legit. That's a that's a legit that's argument, dude. About. That's the yeah. that's one but and only fallacy. Uh, you know, in your defense, it still, still doesn't change the fact that this is going to be all. But in your defense, mm-hmm. that happened exactly with the U.S. dollar, right? Yes. We put our money in the bank. That's that doesn't exist. But exist that, on a grid. Exist on. That's paper. exactly what yeah. I'm saying. So then, at the end of the day, it all comes down to gold, and we went off the gold standard years ago. Yes. So now you're even opening the, the wormhole even more, man. With the history there. <laughs> I mean, even strengthening my argument. That, that Great Depression wasn't all that great. Yeah. Right? Gold standard. That's what shifted us to Keynesian okay. economic theory. Okay. Well, well Keynesian economic of- theory is a joke. And, and it's, why, it, but you, why, you can, it you can tell. It dude, works. Dude, <laughs> dude, dude. Because it's based on falsehoods. Hey, guys. guys. Bitcoin is we, based we on get, scarcity. Whole dude, thing. read the Bitcoin standard. I'm just... Right. Scarcity hey, applies to I, uh, any dude. commodity. <laughs> not, not, all right, dude, we'll dude. <laughs> I just wanted an update. Yeah. <laughs> we got into I it. love it, though, man. <laughs> dude, I love hey, it. Hey, if I'm wrong 30 years, oh, I, will, I, will, hey, I, will, I will bow dude, down to but the... But fair, fair enough. Hey. All, everything that he's talking about is fair enough, yeah. man. I, un- I unleashed know? the beast, so. You believe you believe in the, <laughs> yeah. the end game of it or you don't? I mean, that's what it comes down to. Guys. And at this point, you, it serves you more correctly We're than gonna me. We're going to end the show, admit, guys. You know? Thank you so much for tuning in. This is the French Work Bitch <laughs> Podcast. Don't open that can of worms, <laughs> man. You, you, know, you, know, you know. I thought it was going to be a polite conversation. <laughs> dude, it was. It yeah. was it dude, was I'm not mad. Sure. It no, was polite. It was aggressively about, polite. It was. I was yeah. just getting an update, but it's all, it's all yeah. good. You guys have your opinions. But listen, that's why we love the show. Thank you guys for tuning in. You guys stay tune off, in. Stay off the red line, human. maybe. Just stay off the red line. That's going to give you a heart attack. We'll be here on Tuesday. We're going to have somebody from the water district here. Oh, that's Ooh. Yeah, so we want Government to talk about that. I want to be here on yeah. Tuesday. If you want to be Good. on Tuesday, you yeah, want to yeah. be here? Okay. Be the Water suit? Authority. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. we have somebody from the Water cool. Authority. So Matt's going to be here. Uh, yeah. You guys, please, thank you guys so much. Guy. Yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. And we'll see you guys at the next stream. Talk to you guys later. Thank you for watching an episode of the French Workbench Podcast. If you want to tune into past episodes, please subscribe to my channel now. Also, if you want to look at our audio-only options, we do have iTunes and SoundCloud.